Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we're problem solving with games. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge, and today we're talking about how games can help problem solving. And I've got a few games that you can use and send kids if they've got free time, or if you're working on problem solving, or if you've got kids working at home and you want them to be engaged and to really think through some problems. And I've got some apps that I've taught, some of them I've talked about before, some of them are new, and it's a variety of puzzles and variety of problems to solve, so let's go for it. Uh, the first one is a classic, it's called The Room, and I talked about it I think a year and a half ago. There's actually a version 2 and 3 of The Room, and it is a puzzle game that is really both uh, intriguing to solve and fantastic visually. So you can see that um, we, I can reset the game and we can uh, start it again. And in this game, what you do is you have to solve this ongoing puzzle with new, new and newer uh, problems. So this is the tutorial and you can see that you can look around, you can look from above, you can focus on certain things, and then you have specific actions, and you can see that it reacts really well to your touch. It has clues that go on, and, and I can tap on the key to collect it, and it'll guide you, so this is the tutorial. It, the tutorial carries you through the first few steps, as is usual with these things, but after that, you're on your own. And now, you take the key and you, oh, before I put the key, I need to find the keyhole. And you can see how you go through and you have the physical activity and then you find different items that help you, whether it's keys. And now we're looking for something new, which is the lens to put into it. And it right now guides me through. And you can zoom in and out. And now the answer to the question is fire. And if I click on it, It'll reveal a key. So you can see how this goes on, and it gets more and more complicated, new and very interesting puzzles. So you can teach about collaboration, you can teach about problem solving, and you can teach about the creative process very easily. So this one is the room, and again, there's the room two and three. So very, very engaging, very visually appealing uh, problem solving. Uh, flow free is a different kind of a problem solving app and this one can be played on the phone or the uh, iPod touch. Go to free play and go to regular pack and go to, you can see that there are different kinds of boards so if we can go to a 5x5 five five board all you have to do is connect similar colors without crossing although there are levels with bridges and how many turns it takes you to do it, or if you're doing it as a timed trial, there's actually a time limit and you try to see how many times you can do it, and it gets more sophisticated as you go along. And this is a fantastic way to do some spatial problem solving that is, seems very, very simple, and at a five by five grid, it's fairly simple. So you can work with fairly young kids, and then it gets more and more sophisticated, and if you get up to the level where you do a nine by nine grid, it gets incredibly complicated and a real challenge. So the advantage of flow is you can work with fairly young children all the way to adults, and everybody's challenged with this game solving spatial problems. Uh, so that's another app that you can use for problem solving. Another one, and this is part of a series of apps. In bridges, what you do, which is very common to this uh, kind of apps, is you build a bridge with different materials, 
and you have usually a set uh, cost, so beyond a certain point you can't do it. And when you try out very early on, here are your materials, so here are your building materials. So you can start building, this is in wood, and it shows you, so this is a tutorial, and it shows you how you build this bridge. And when you're ready, all you do is you test the bridge, and you test the bridge with cars or with trucks, so let's try the trucks. And that tests whether the bridge can actually take the weight of the different vehicles and what happens when you don't. So this is an illustration of what you can do. You get points and bonus points. You can post to Facebook, I don't see a reason to. But this, of course, gets more complicated as you get along. So you can go and build the, s the next one. What I like about this one specifically is it actually guides you through. So it tells kids things like triangles are very stable, which is true. And you can start building. And now it doesn't tell you, but it gave you a hint about triangles. So now you can start building triangles and seeing how you can build them in a way that will actually help make it stable. And I built on purpose one that doesn't exactly carry. You can see that this bridge is not holding. So something that I've done did not work, and now the trucks are crashing. Now, some kids really like seeing their cars crash, which is perfectly fine, but they also like solving the puzzle, so realizing I did something wrong, I need to fix it, so you can go back and say, okay, I need to do something, and in my case, it's maybe fixing this one, and then connecting them up on top. Let's see if it works this time. So seeing if this was strong enough. And if the bridge has some give, you'll actually see it moving, which is an important indication that something is not as stable as it should be. So this one is, again, a great problem uh, solving app. And it's called Bridge Free. And it is free. You can buy more sophisticated ones, and you can buy more levels. But definitely to get kids going on problem solving, this should be enough. Uh, the last app I want to talk about are, is called Through the Hoop. This is a different kind of problem solving, and that's connected also to motor control. And what you have to do is try to score a basketball, and you're controlling it with your finger. And the first few uh, levels are very, very simple, and you don't have to think about them very much. You just kind of got to get it going, and, or not going, in my case. And the question is how many times you can do it repeatedly. But as it gets more and more sophisticated, you have obstacles and you start having to think about the physics of the ball, what angle it'll hit the wall, and where it'll end up as a way to think about it. So if I stop and say, let's go through a, to a different level, you can see that now I have a block here, so I can't just do it. I have to use the wall in some ways. And you have to start thinking about angles and how, what direction you need to do it, spin, and other things. So it's a real problem solving. I mean, we often think about this as games. But these games really teach kids how to think through a problem, especially if we then ask them to guide somebody else through how they do it and how they think about it and ask them to do some think alouds. It's a great way to take a problem solving activity that they do and figure out without expressively thinking about it in that way and then make them aware of their own thinking. And that's a great way to have some problem solving happening in a very productive way. So here are four examples. Um, actually, the the store is full of games that can serve in that function. So I suggest search around, see what's popular in problem solving games, and then see what works and, of course, what's free. And so today I talked about some problem solving games that really develop the flexibility and the way kids can interact with problems that don't have a prescribed solution that is exactly the same every time. And it's a great way to develop some 21st century skills, and I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.